Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and we're going to be talking about Alone Season 3 Episode 2 in this video. So spoiler alert here, if you haven't seen Episode 2 of Alone, then don't watch the rest of this video because we're going to talk about the people who will not be back for Episode 3. Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about three main things. First we'll talk about Zach and the fact that he's no longer on the show. Second thing we'll talk about is mental stress and some ways to possibly respond to that. And then third I'll just show you some of the gear like I shared in the last uh, video about Alone that I made. As I'm watching the show during the commercials I'm kind of looking at some new gear that I got so I'll share some of that with you. Alright, Zach, he's no longer on the show. So I was just kind of reflecting on him and what seemed to have led to his, you know, basically being off the show now. Um, he was seemed stressed already, and then he was going to get a lot of bamboo, so he had to hike quite a distance. It was rainy, it was wet. Uh, there's been lots of footage from a bunch of the participants as far as the undergrowth and how just kind of nasty it is, gnarly, all kinds of roots and things. Um, so it was rainy, he was annoyed, uh, probably tired, because, you know, you're going to be tired after not having a lot of food for a handful of days. And, um, and then the rough, rough part was that he had his axe without the sheath on it and he was hiking and fell and it looks like he dug it into his, his upper arm on the, I think it's on the left side if I remember correctly. One thing I do want to note is that uh, on the show it kind of looks like, you know, he cut himself and then pretty quickly called and said, hey, you know, I'm injured, somebody needs to come look at me. They do editing, so they can't show if he took five hours to try to get the bleeding stop and then, you know, stopped and then he finally called. So it's hard to tell how long he actually took uh, before he made that call to say, hey, somebody's got to come look at this. The other thing to note is that once the doctor actually came to Zach's site and uh, checked it out, the doctor basically said, I can't do, I can't do this. I can't fix it here. I can't repair it here. And so that was pretty much the end for, uh, for Zach, it seems. So, yeah, I mean, it's a bummer. Um, I, I didn't even notice until after the episode that they that the name of that episode was First Blood. So, um, yeah, bummer that he got hurt. I'm glad it wasn't very serious, obviously. Uh, seems like it was serious enough he had to go, but less serious than what happened in Season 2 with the mishandling um, of the axe. But let's talk about stress and handling stressful situations a little bit. Um, you know, you're carrying your axe in the woods, you don't have your sheath on it, and you're stressed and then just things start to pile on top of one another. This is a topic I talk about quite a bit in my survival seminars before we get into, you know, how do you make a fire? How do you make a shelter? I talk a lot about the mental side of things because, you know, you're out there in the woods, you're hunting, and then you're like, I think I might be lost. Then you get stressed. So you start walking faster, and then you're a little bit more lost. So you start running, and you're like, I'm sure it's just over this hill, and then you're in a really bad situation. Then you trip, and you sprain your ankle. Now you're lost, it's becoming nighttime, it's cold, and you got a busted ankle. So, you know, dealing with mental stress is something you got to be able to do. I put a link down below to a video by Dr. John Kenworthy, and um, it's less than five minutes, but it was really interesting. I watched it probably a month ago or so when I was getting ready to do a survival seminar that I was teaching, and uh, it's about dealing with mental stress and how before you even, before your brain actually kicks in to say, let me make choices about how I'm going to respond, what your body just does automatically, how your, your body just responds uh, in various ways. So that's worth watching just to kind of check out to see as stress level goes up and your, you know, your thinking part of your brain starts to not be working as well and you just start to respond um, you know, based on your biology. The other person I want to talk about is Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. He's the originator of the sheepdog concept, if, you ever, if you've ever heard of that before. And um, he works with soldiers, he's been an instructor at West Point, um, he's, in a, he's a retired army ranger, just a lot of experience in a lot of different areas. And I've heard him on, in some videos, I've heard some podcasts of him, um, I've got a couple of his books actually, and he talks about the topic of stress and dealing with stress, you know, once your thinking brain is kicking in at least a little bit to say, okay, let me think about how I can de-escalate the situation that I'm actually in. And he talks a lot about breathing, so uh, one of the key things he's taught in the past is in for five seconds, you know, deep breath in for five seconds, hold for five seconds, and then exhale for five seconds. And in one of the uh, podcasts I was listening to that he was talking in, uh, he talked about actually a guy who rolled his car and was stuck in the car, and through the process of going through those breathing exercises that he was taught by Grossman, he actually was, when they got there to, to rescue him, uh, he wasn't like, you know, mortally injured, he was just stuck in the car. He actually had the radio on and was kind of like humming along to the, the, uh, the radio. So, you know, dealing with stressful situations, um, it's, you gotta be ahead of the curve. Sometimes you can't, your body just reacts, you just kinda freak out. Um, but obviously the mental stress is gonna be a huge deal on this season of Alone. So how do you respond to these situations that just start to feel 
overwhelming. Grossman also talks about who we are as you know biological beings, and he he talks about this concept of like um, not just breathing, but also taking a drink of water. So when he counsels guys who are wrestling with PTSD and they start to have flashbacks or start to get kind of amped up emotionally, he'll tell them to stop and to drink some water. And the reason he does that is because it basically forces you to do the same thing as the breathing exercises. Because when you drink water, you kind of take a, a breath in and then as you drink, you hold your breath and then when you get done, you breathe out. And he actually links that back to like animals. If you have a wolf that's chasing a deer, the deer's not gonna stop and get a drink of water until it finally feels safe. And so there's something connected to just kind of the biology of uh, living beings that when they're drinking water, it kind of gets them back to this place of stability and more calmness and such. So I just thought that's kind of interesting, um, but obviously the mental stress piece is gonna be a huge, huge deal for uh, these folks on alone. Stress has been a huge deal for the first two seasons. It'll be a huge deal this season and for as long as it's on television. I'm sure that's going to be a big piece. Yeah, you got to have the skills, but you got to be able to deal with the stress mentally. I do want to say that, you know, it's easy in these moments to be a Monday morning quarterback and be like, oh, he should have done this, 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 and this. But he lasted a bunch of days, had an injury, and had to, uh, had to tap out. So it is what it is, and kudos to you, Zach, for even getting into the process and uh, getting down to Patagonia. So thumbs up for putting in your best efforts. All right, let's talk a little gear here. This is a knife from Miller Brothers Blades. And I was checking this out during the show. These things are amazing. Um, just big honking blades, kind of a medieval look. The sheaths have kydex and all kinds of leather. And they have like systems, so sheaths that you can put fire steels on. And I mean, these guys make swords, they make all kinds of things. So this is really kind of a cool looking knife. So I'll be doing a review of that sometime in the future. but. That's one of the knives I was checking out. Another knife, uh, this is an EDC knife for me, newer. This is from Gerber, this is a full auto. And on the back here, you can see S30V. This is the 06, and it's 10 years that it's uh, been out. Cool knife, the 06 auto from Gerber. Obviously, you gotta be able to use auto knives depending on where you're, where you're at. So that's a new EDC knife for me. And then last up here is this which is a new tomahawk that I got from CRKT. I'm gonna be rolling this into my, um, my bushcraft kit. If I can get this sheath off, we'll see here. There we go. So this is what it looks like. This is the Kanji. They also have the Chogun, which has a, um, a hammer on the back. This has got that spike. And the reason I got this one is because the, um, the blade is actually, the actual cutting edge is longer than the Chogun. So this will be rolled into the kit. I'm gonna actually wrap some leather around the end there. It's a cool little, cool little tomahawk. I'm excited to use this guy. So there you have it, Alone Season 3, Episode 2. Just some quick thoughts. Uh, I'll be doing some videos in the future. Um, one thing I'm going to do is talk about uh, the other Zach, Fowler, who brought, I think, a multi-tool, the shovel, and the slingshot. Just talking about those three items in particular. Um, I'm also going to do my, what I would bring if I was going on the show, just to show you some of the type of items I think would be helpful out in Patagonia. Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let us know what you thought about uh, season three, episode two, and uh, we'll get that discussion going. Stay tuned for some more videos on Alone. Take care, guys.